Hello students, this is Professor Abhijit D. Patil, Department of Civil Engineering, KID College of Engineering, Kolhapur. In this video, we will be discussing the course Structural Dynamics and Earthquake Engineering. So, after completing this course, the students will be able to identify the causes of earthquake and its effects on structures, examine the role of planning, detailing and modern techniques to improve seismic performance of RCC, masonry as well as steel structures, evaluate different vibrating systems and multi-storied buildings to find loads and responses. Unit 1 comprises of uh, engineering seismology is divided basically into four different parts, causes of earthquake, terminologies and effects of earthquake, measurement of earthquake and other aspects. So, we will be discussing in this video the part 1 that is lesson 1 causes of earthquake. So, what leads to the generation of earthquakes? So, for that we need to study internal structure of the earth, continental drift theory, mantle convection currents, plate tectonic theory and elastic rebound theory. So, this is how the internal structure of the earth looks. Most of us may remember that this we have studied in school science, high school science. The earth's crust comp comprises of different different layers to start with at the top is earth's crust which is having thickness of about 0 to 100 kilometer. Then we have mantle, then we have outer core and then the innermost is inner core. So, crust as we know is made up of mostly solid matter. Mantle is a viscous matter, so imagine a lubricating oil, so that kind of uh, composition is there inside mantle. Outer core is in liquid state and inner core is again in a solid state. The uppermost part that is the lithosphere which comprises of the crust and the uppermost solid part of mantle. Below that we have asthenosphere. You can see the depth. So, at 2900 kilometers from the surface, we have outer core. 5100 kilometers from the surface, we have inner core. So, this is the internal structure of the earth. Here we can see the forms. The uppermost is we know rigid and brittle. Then asthenosphere which is below the lithosphere is weak and it is in plastic state. Below that is the lower mantle or mesosphere, it is rigid and hot. Then outer core is liquid and inner core is in solid state. So, this is how the earth's crust if we uh, divide it into layers, it will look like this. Now, coming to the next point continental drift theory. So, it was proposed by Wagner in nine, nine, 1912. So, what he says, the continents were once a single supercontinent called as Pangaea, which gradually drifted apart. So, what is the evidence of this? The fit of continents and fossil evidence. There are other evidences also, we will focus on these two. So, you can see on the right hand side, the image Pangaea or Pangaea, it is 225 million years ago. So, all the continents were connected together and slowly they started moving. So, we can focus on the Indian subcontinent. So, here it was like an island, then it started moving, moving and at this point it is combined with Eurasian plate, the whole Europe and Russia or Asia, it is called as Eurasian plate. So, this is the evidence of fit of continent, that is if you compare the Africa and South America, they fit together. And second major evidence is fossil evidence. So, some of the fossils are, uh, similar fossils are found across continents which are now separated by oceans. So, this theory was proposed by Wagner, but uh, the explanation can be given with the help of plate tectonic theory. So, let us try to understand what is plate tectonic theory. So, earth consists of uh, major plates, you can say 7 or 8 plates, 
the Eurasian plate, the Australian plate, the Antarctic plate, the African plate, the South American, North American plate and Pacific plate. So, these are major plates and we have minor plates like Cocoa plate, Nazca plate, Caribbean plate, Indian plate, Arabian plate and Philippine plate. So, earth is, earth's crust is not a single uh, piece, the right hand side image explains it more, this uh, earth's crust is like a football. So, football is made up of, the football surface is not made up of a single uh, material. So, it is uh, different different parts stitched together. So, it is that kind of surface. So, once we understand this. Let us try to understand the temperature gradient which is present. So, we can see at uh, crust it is 0 degree or we can say atmospheric temperature. Then below the crust there is mantle which we know is in viscous form or plastic form. So, there the temperature is 1000 degree centigrade. The temperature at the outer core surface is around 3700 degree centigrade and at the inner core it is 4300 degree centigrade. So, this is the temperature gradient or temperature difference which is present. So, atmospheric temperature at the earth's crust and 4300 degree centigrade at the inner core. Now, what is the significance of this temperature gradient? So, let us go back to go to boiling water analogy. So, again this is from school physics, we know that when uh, a boiling water kept in a vessel is kept on a burner, so all the temperature at the top of the uh, water surface as well as the bottom of the uh, burner, it does not increase uniformly at single go. So, what happens is the surface which is in contact with burner that is bottom surface, it heats up and the water molecules which are present at the bottom, they get warmer and because of warmer, they get light and the water molecules which are present near the atmosphere, they have atmospheric temperature. So, they are cooler as compared to the bottom water molecules. So, what happens the cooler molecules which are heavier, they go down and the water molecules which are lighter, they go up. Now, the water molecules which are warm, they start losing heat to the atmospheric temperature and they tend to become cool and the cooler molecules which are now at the bottom, they get heat from the burner from bottom. And this cycle continues and gradually the temperature of the water will increase. So, this is called as convection. Now, what is, why are we studying this? So, we will try to understand. There is a concept called as mantle convection currents. So, just now we seen, we have seen that the temperature gradient is present. The temperature at the core is 4300 degree centigrade and temperature below, just below crust is 1000 degree centigrade. So, around 3000 to 4000 degree centigrade temperature difference is there. So, if you look at the left hand side figure, if we put wooden blocks, small pieces of wooden blocks on the water. So, what will happen because of convection, the wooden blocks will not remain stationary, they will move away from each other because of convection currents which are present inside the water. So, now imagine this inside the earth's crust, the image on the right hand side. So, what is happening? There is convection of currents in the ma mantle. So, what is mantle consists of? It consists of magma which we call, it is a viscous or plastic fluid. So, it can flow. So, whenever it gets temperature from core, high temperature from core, it becomes warmer it, and lighter. So, it tries to move upwards and the magma which is present below the earth's crust, it will uh, it is cooler, so it will try to sink in and because of that convection currents are formed just like in the water. So, these are called as mantle convection currents 
and we know the plates which are present ab above this mantle they are literally floating and because of this convecting magma the plates are moving sometimes towards each other sometimes away from the each other so these are this is the significance of mantle convection currents now because of this mantle convection current we can see clearly in this figure so at the outer core the temperature is high the mantle is uh, getting heated and it uh, becomes lighter and it tries to move upwards so whenever there is a plate boundary the at the center we can see oceanic ridge so at that point the magma tries to push it towards it tries to come out of the earth's crust so because of that we uh, get a push on the plates so this is called as ridge push and at the other side what is happening when where the mantle or magma is sinking it tries to pull the earth's crust or the plate along with itself so this is called as uh, the zone is called as subduction zone and the phenomena is called as slab pull so there is a ridge push at the center of the figure and on the left and right hand side we can see there is a slab pull so because of this combined effect the convection of currents of mantle then the ridge push and the uh, slab pull we have moving plates so earth's crust is literally floating it is made up of different different plates and uh, it is moving it is not stationary because of this all this phenomena and because of all these activities inside the earth's crust or inside the magma we have plate boundaries so with red arrows uh, the red arrows show the plates uh, direction of plates in which direction they are moving so we can see for example the indian plate the eurasian plate is moving towards indian plate on the right hand uh, side and the indian plate is moving towards eurasian plate so plates are moving towards each other if we see the antarctic plate plate and pacific plate they are moving away from each other so uh, we can see there are different different types of plate boundaries so whenever uh, the plates are moving towards each other sorry away from each other they are called as divergent plate boundaries so what happens at such boundaries the magma tries to uh, come out of the earth's crust out of the mantle so the motion is spreading they are moving away from each other it is spreading motion what is the effect it is constructive that means the magma uh, will come out of the earth's crust in the form of volcanoes and it will spread on the ocean uh, on the plate and it will in due course of time it will cool down so this will uh, form a new earth's crust so that is why it is called as constructive and what is the topographical feature we have a ridge because the magma is trying to come out of the earth's crust second type of boundary is convergent that is the two plates are moving towards each other so this is a destructive boundary why it is destructive because you can notice one plate boundary is going down the slab pool is there and when it uh, goes down because of high temperature it melts and it becomes a part of magma molten magma we have uh, a topographical feature as a trench and there are volcanic activities also on these type of boundaries then third is transform that is the boundaries are moving parallel to each other lateral sliding motion and it is conservative boundary that means neither the uh, lithosphere is created nor it is destroyed so there is no major topographical effect at such boundaries and we don't have any volcanic activities okay now we have understood the plate tectonic theory why the plates are moving 
so we can notice what is this graph this is these are seismic activities recorded along the plate, plate boundaries so to understand why the earthquakes happen we are studying this so we first we studied continental drift theory and second we have studied plate tectonic theory and because of uh, such movements we have these three types of uh, major faults so thrust fault that is convergent normal fault divergent and strike slip fault that is transfer boundary or parallel boundary now the concept of elastic rebound theory so this explains how energy is stored in rocks rocks bend until the strength of rock is exceeded so rupture occurs and the rocks quickly rebound to an undeformed shape energy is released in waves that radiate outward from the fault so this is one example so let us try to understand uh, what is elastic rebound theory with the help of this animation so we can see these are two plates the stress increases because these plates are moving and at one point the stress gets released and sudden uh, release of energy is there and this is permanent deformation again the stress will get built up we will try to see the second figure so you can see the relative movement the fault plane stress is building up between the plates that is energy is stored then there are some four shocks that is the shocks before the earthquake and there are some earthquakes that is energy is released and this is the main shock so after the earthquake so there is a rupture along the fault surface and there is this permanent deformation again the plates are not stationary this cycle is repeated so this is elastic rebound theory so after we understand all these concepts so finally what are earthquakes the shaking or trembling caused by sudden release of energy so we have understood why there is sudden release of energy because of continental drift theory because of plate tectonic theory and because of elastic rebound theory so you can imagine the amount of energy released huge land masses the exam for example indian plate and the eurasian plate so whenever there is such movement and the stress is being built up and at one point the stress get released in the form of sudden energy because large land masses are involved in such activities that is why the amount of energy released is so much and the shaking caused because of such release of energy is nothing but earthquake so it is usually associated with faulting or breaking of rocks or plates and the process is not one time it is repeated continuing adjustment of position and the sudden disturbance in the earth's crust may produce vibration in the crust which travel in all directions so just like the image on the right hand side if you if there is a steel pond pond water and if you throw a stone so a ripples in all directions will be produced so similar kind of vibrations are produced in earth's crust and that is why we feel the earthquake so now we have understood the main cause of earthquake let us take one example of our uh, formation of himalaya mountain so we know the continental drift theory the indian subcontinent or indian plate was moving towards the eurasian plate and at one point in time it collided with the eurasian plate the plate got folded like this the eurasian plate got folded and the himalayas are formed and the indian plate is going down sinking like this so this is the condition at the that is why we uh, experience lot of earthquakes in the himalayan region the current example is the nepal earthquake few years back we experienced 